going on, everybody? How are you, my friend? Good to see you out there. Sorry, Phantom. Nice to have you here tonight. I have a special topic tonight called The Cheating Wife. And a special guest to talk about it. He'll be joining us in a few minutes. Let me know how the audio is. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Or as the Verizon guy would say. Can you hear me now? Brett Henderson. Excellent. Budapest Mole. It is tinny. I think it's these uh, these things that I'm using. These ear pods. There's really nothing I can do about the audio. I wish I could. Let me see if let me see if there's anything I can do about it. Echo cancellation. Uh, wired. Let's see. Check one, two, three. How does that sound? Can you hear me better now? We're going to have an interesting guest on. I was making some comment. And, uh, and I had a guy who emailed me and told me that he caught his wife cheating. And of course, my Heart goes out to anyone who goes through that. And I said, would you be willing to come on the show and talk about it? And and I wanted to find out how long it's been. I mean, if it just happened, that's kind of a raw moment. That's not something most people are willing to talk about. And not so quickly. Some time has to go by. Hey, Brittany, what's up? Chris, Paul, Josh Fritz, Long Island. So I said, what is your phone number? He gave me his phone number. I called him. And I started talking to him. And he was just talking along with me. And then he says, hey, wait a minute. This sounds like the guy that I listen to on YouTube in the mornings. It was, it was kind of funny, because he didn't realize that I was going to call him right away. And I did. And I have, you know, I have a good relationship with the majority of my subscribers. And I welcome people all the time. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's necessary to have a relationship with people. It doesn't work all the time. Kettlebell, what's going on, my fellow beast? Good to see you. So I'm going to bring him on. His name is Chris, and I'm going to keep him anonymous unless he wants to be any uh, be any different. But we'll we'll just call him Chris, okay? And we'll see if if we want to open this up for any questions. So, without any further ado. Hey, George. Well, there's Chris. How are you, sir? I'm good. So nice to see you. Good. It's good to be seen. Definitely. Yeah. Well, what a surprise. What a surprise. Uh, right. The topic I thought was interesting, and I know I surprised you with a phone call this morning. Oh, I've been subscribed, I think, since 2015, and I, I thought okay. YouTube was playing on my phone, and it was uh, it was you, and I'm like, oh, no, oh, oh, yeah, it was awesome. I was just like, oh, I watched every video, oh, man, oh, yeah, I could go on for hours about that, so big, Great. big fan. Great, thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so in our interchange Mm -hmm. you had shared with me a video that you had done, and I've never seen anything like this, except maybe on uh, 
I guess there used to be a show called Cheaters. I'm not. It, it sure. was on like one of the Fox channels, and it was very sensationalized. But uh, yours was not sensational. It was no. the it was the videotaping of a man in crisis, and boy, did right. I see it in your I saw it in your face. Mm -hmm. You were a husband. You're a yep. father of a couple kids. You caught your wife cheating. Yep. And this is not to exploit your pain and sure. what you went through in any way. You certainly mm -hmm. don't have any intention of that. The number one intention of this stream is to help others. Because I know, here we are on Tuesday night, my inbox is going to be filled with men who are going through the same thing that you went mm -hmm. through yep. by Friday by Friday morning. I guarantee mm -hmm. you there will be between 12 and 20 men who are going to write me to tell me that they've been through what you went through. So sure. do you mind telling your story? You can stay, stay as anonymous as you want. Stay, uh, you know, don't get yourself into legal trouble. Sure. But, you know, yep. uh, share share with the audience sure. what you want, what you want. Sure. And then I'll ask questions, and then, of course, we're going to leave it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave it open for some questions as well. So tell your story. Yeah, so um, I guess kind of leading up to that video, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, suspicious feelings that you have inside. But, you know, I'm a pretty boring guy, church every Sunday, Bible study every Wednesday, you know, pretty – midwestern grew up on a farm and uh so these kind of cheating things you don't even think about happening but little things um the ex-wife would come home late uh with a story then you notice in the morning it's a different story so you think to yourself you know what what could be going on i don't know of anything i don't have social media or anything so i'm kind of out of the loop i'm working all the time but um what do you uh, do what is Oh uh, yeah, so I grew up on a 2,500-acre organic farm. My family, I was homeschooled, you know. So we just kind of were pretty boring, like, <laughs> like nothing. Uh, I didn't get a phone till I was 24 years old, so I just never, never into that. Spent a lot of time with my grandpa, who's a war vet that has a lot of the same values that you have. I mean, to a T. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. And yeah, and basically. Uh, there was a little tipping point. Um, you know, you get that gut feeling something's going on. So I, I remember I uh, bought a little tracker. I put it in the car, uh, my, you know, a Dodge Charger I had at the time. And uh, it didn't take 48 hours for it to, I didn't even know how to work it. I'm like, oh, this thing's broken. It's not, she said she's going on a girl's nights out kind of thing. I'll just, just hang out at a friend's house, you know. Well, she wasn't at the friend's house and I followed the GPS tracker you know, way late at night, I think it was October, uh, behind a schoolhouse, you know, where kids go to school. And, yeah. and this was a few years ago, is that correct? Yep, 2018. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, yeah, basically, I, I thought, oh, there's no, I'm like praying to God on my way there. I have the kids in the van. You know, I'm left home with the kids all, all the time. Um, kind, of, kind of looking back with single parenting this whole time without while being married, uh, if you say. Anyway, yeah. get up to the schoolhouse, and I see a cop beside my car, the Dodge Charger, and I'm like, you know, oh, no. Not thinking this is going to be an unfaithful act, but, yeah, then dr driving up to it, uh, he hops out of the driver's seat. She hops out of the passenger seat of my car. He's on duty. Um, long story short, we got him out of there the next day I went to the sheriff's office, but... I can still, to this day, remember the click sound of his heavy brass belt, utility belt, whatever, click, that kush, and the zipper, like every little grit notch to the zipper, I can hear that go zip up, and, you know, you're just, the the feeling, you know, of course, it's your stereotypical, you know, you got the, your heart goes into your stomach, your knees go weak kind of thing, but what was different is the feelings you didn't, that you thought you'd feel, but you didn't feel. Like you might think if you've never been cheated on, you might think, oh man, if I caught my wife, I would drag that guy across the table. There was none of that. I was completely numb. Um, I was just, just total, almost felt nauseous, sick. Did, so, did he know it was you? Yeah, he knew. I didn't know him. 
he knew me real well. Uh, and I, I'm six foot six. Everyone knows me. Size 17 shoe. Uh, he's a little little guy. Still bump into him from time to time at Walmart. He runs away. But yeah, not the, I'm, not, I'm not a scary guy. I'm pretty boring. So, um, but yeah, so it was very uh, like, and right when you catch that encounter, I had the kids in the van, you know, and they're probably, they were probably sleeping at that time because it was 20 miles from our house. And um, when you think like, oh, I got it, it then that's the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more under your nose, you know, and you think back, how did I not see this? And yeah, so the feelings that you thought would be there really weren't, there was no rage or, oh, I'm going to kill myself or kill somebody. That's not like, the case right. for me, right? So you went numb. Yeah, very numb. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, f um, from there, you know, it's basically like what you said. I've, I've watched many videos of yours and it's save the man, not the marriage at that point. 100%. You know, 100%. So uh, after the nauseous feeling, we knew, well, so my pastor said, go to marriage counseling. Looking back, uh, that all that was said in the marriage counseling was used against me later in our parenting investigation. So that if I could do that again, I wouldn't have even bothered with parent, uh, parenting classes or, or I'm sorry, marriage courses. And, uh, yeah, it was just, um, a really numb. I was, I remember throwing up diarrhea. I was super sick. I lost a lot of weight, but then when I started that working on the man, save the man, not the marriage, um, I started working out. And if you're going through this, you're going to rock you Balboa, this thing, punch the meat in the freezer, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, get a hobby. And if you need to make money, instead of making Bob Ross paintings in the closet, go make some Udemy courses or something, go find a hobby where you can to get your side hustle going. It's time to get your mind off of this. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately there's no justice in, you know, cause then led the divorce and we can, I can talk about all that stuff if needed, but yeah, there's no justice. There's legal justice and moral justice. And yeah, it went from, uh, we were a happy, like we have to this day over 19,000 subscribers. We were a YouTube family. We had family vlogs. We were known as the great, we met, wow. uh, yeah, I'm ordained. Oh yeah. It was a whole thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so it wasn't, uh, so faith in God. Yeah. Didn't keep this from happening. Oh no, no, no. It, uh, in fact, the church kind of took her side because she claimed abuse kind of a lot of people have, I've heard of testimonies where that kind of gets twisted in the mix. And uh, so the church took her side. Then she ended up a month after that video or month and a half, she got pregnant by a guy named noisy Hawk who looks like Dennis Rodman, who's the, sat, sat in the front seat of church every Sunday. I mean, so she had this kid with him. He's on drugs. She moves him in. Uh, so, so, not a month after that video, I had to go to a funeral. We're still living together. Don't leave the marital home. Big tip advice if you're going to go, don't leave the marital home. I didn't. Right. Um, right. I, everyone was saying I should. So glad I didn't. Um, and so we have two kids. And uh, what was I going? After that video with catching the cheating and stuff, um, I went to a funeral. It sounds like a movie. So, this is crazy. So I went to a funeral. My buddy, he passed away. He was in the service. We did the flag folding and the honorary shots. And uh, when I came home, not everything, but everything was gone, like the rug and the kids. So, and I watched the cameras. And as soon as I left out the back door to leave to the funeral, the moving trucks came and her family started loading up. I'm like, what? So I came home from a funeral. <laughs> Where? Yeah. So I was alienated from my kids for a month. And you would think, and then she, she, she went somewhere and then moved, got this druggy guy moved in, got pregnant, all that stuff. You'd think any of that would have weight in a court hearing of it. No, that, that did what, nothing. What state are you in? What North state Dakota. Do you live in? Yep. Okay, North, Dakota. North Dakota, right up kind of by the Canada border. Okay. So yeah, we've been enjoying Canada's nice uh, smoky fires. <laughs> been very hazy over here. So yeah. poor air quality, but yeah. Um, and then basically uh, got an attorney uh, and, you know, spent way too much money in that. I think anybody who's going through a divorce needs to 
talk to someone, if, if you're a guy, talk to a guy who's been through a divorce in your state that you've been, that you're probably going to have a divorce in. So like scheduling a George Bruno phone call is going to pay for itself. Yeah. Like big time. <laughs> yep. yep. So, yeah. So, all right. So it happened in 2018. Yep. Happened in 2018. Take me along the emotional journey that you've been on since 2018. 2018, um, I'd say the end of that, you know, November, December um, was pretty much just focused on the kids and trying to save the marriage of whatever you could. Uh, It was very uh, isolating. Uh, One thing I think you've mentioned many times, but you lose your, so you're the friends. So we were married you know, five or six years. So all your friends that you make as a couple, most of the time, if you're the guy, they side with the woman because a lot of the girls in your couple's friends will side with her. And then your guy friends that are married to those women to not fight them, they'll just be like, yeah, I'll just go with you, honey. You know? So every year it's a CPS call. We get, I get every year. It's a false CPS call. We've got, it's gotten so normal where the CPS social worker will come up, roll her eyes and go, okay. Here we go yep. again. We got here we, we have go to again. be here. It's necessary. We, yep. Nothing against them. They're doing their job and they do it really good. Um, but yeah, 30 days, 30 days later, it comes back unfounded. Yep. Yep. And then, and a lot of people think, um, you know, they make the anonymous call and it's all of our, you know, people we knew together and stuff. Um, yeah. Um, you think like they make the anonymous call, but you can actually find, get unredacted reports to find out who the caller was. And we've done that multiple times. So, but, yeah. but just knowing that your friends don't bring them into the divorce because, you know, if I was fortunate enough to have my family was my, like my mom and dad, they're all good. So, but yeah, I lost all my friends to this day. I have no friends, just George and <laughs> my kids and family. And uh, yeah. And the church, uh, after all the, and there was m- more guys uh, from the church, um, nothing against the church at all. Just like for how toxic that environment was, had to take a step back. But yeah, yeah. so the, there's a saying that goes a fr- an enemy, uh, a friend can do more damage than a foe. And that was the case. Yeah. A, fr- yeah. a friend can, can uh, do, a friend can do more damage than five enemies. Oh yeah. Or 15 enemies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and there's another saying that and that this is so true with these kind of situations there's no good way to hug a porcupine there's just no good way yeah. <laughs> you know? are you in communication with her now yeah so than, i was other than the kids no uh it's just the kids um so that's another thing where um yeah you you want to co-parent you know you try to be that Let's, let's just make it work for the kids. But, yeah. you know, and this word gets thrown around way too much. Every person thinks their ex is a narcissist. I'm, I'm guaranteeing you she's probably not. They're all just crazy, <laughs> you know, they're just prideful, you know, selfish. So yeah, the whole narcissist thing is way overused. And it it's when, it when and you so, go, is abusive. so is abusive. So is abusive. Oh, yeah. Every- like every woman I've ever dated since I've been divorced has an abusive, narcissistic ex. Oh, yeah. Like every oh, single yeah. one. Put it on every shirt. single one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's true. But, you know, there is there is light at the end of this tunnel. When you're in the pits of this whole being cheated on thing, it's a dark tunnel. It's very isolating. Uh, one thing, don't do. Don't hop on Tinder right away. Don't uh, don't go to the bar. Don't have any. Don't do any substance if you're contemplating any kind of suicidal anything. Well, you just had a friend go through that. Put a gun to himself. Don't go through like. Yeah. Stay away from all that. That doesn't solve nothing. Yeah. Right. That's right. So, I that's mean, right. it's just one of those things where you gotta really just be in it for the kids. Just be the good dad. And I was fortunate enough to get fifty-fifty custody. So. Um, okay which I had to fight, but you had to fight. Like they start you off in, in the state I'm in, you're in every other weekend dad at best. And then you fight yeah. and spend the money. Yeah. You go from dad to uncle. Pretty much. Yeah. The fun uncle, yeah. you know, and, and even if you were the dad that was the stay at home parent or the good, the morally good one or whatever, you know, um, that doesn't matter in court. It's a machine. And I don't know 
you know, Coach Greg Greg Adams had a live stream out just now, and so did Jennifer. Je, forget her last name, McGlinsky or Molesky. Molesky. Mm-hmm. Um, just yeah. super good videos out. Um, yeah, you know, another thing to avoid, and this might clash against some of the viewers, is watch out for that red pill community a little bit. Don't sink your teeth too. Not all women are evil. I promise you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Avoid some of the, uh, you know, you can learn a lot from the red pill stuff with the female nature. You can get a lot of good statistics out of it. You know, that word monogamy or not monogamy, um, uh, monkey Hyper- branching hypergamy yeah. comes up a lot, yeah. but, um, yeah, don't, don't build that hate up. That's not really necessary. So, yeah. 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 Well, you sound like a very rational red pilled guy. Uh, do you think that this, do you think that this experience opened your eyes in a way that they weren't open before? Oh yeah. Oh, big time. Uh, in the, you know, in the Christian community and I, I'm still, I'm very involved in the church and everything, but I grew up in, uh, kind of Lutheran and then evangelical and the whole, uh, um, there's good in everybody. Mm-hmm. I, there's some people that just have black hearts and, you know, I'm not saying they can't go to heaven or anything, but there's some people like you'd think, oh, they would never, he would never, you get all these promises and they, they would, you know, yeah. and the, and the, so the, 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 that cheating video was with a cop who was on duty. This had been going on for a while. Then it was a, a no, noisy hawk. And then it, now she's engaged to a cop that replaced this other cop that we got out of there. So it just never, the, the drama never ends, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask yeah. you this. Going mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. while you were courting this woman, mm-hmm. do you feel that there were red flags that you may have overlooked? Mm-hmm. Were you hoping for her best nature to pop out? Were you, tell, t- just follow through on that. Did you see things yeah. that, when you look back, you go, darn, I should have known. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody hindsight. Yeah. Um, so we met on the church worship team. I was the drummer. She was the guitar person. Asked her to Dairy Queen. Never had a girlfriend in my life. I'm 24 at this time. Never, you know, we did sex for marriage, like everything you can imagine. Never kissed a girl ever. And, uh, yeah, did the looking back, um, there's a lot of, um, trauma. She had a lot of trauma, which, I don't know how much of a crutch you can blame on past trauma, but um, yeah, there's enough red flags and the choices one makes and yeah. um, being so young, maybe just, uh, just wait on that a bit. I don't know. <laughs> Looking back there's just that we could be here for 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. Now. All right. So you were 24. Was she yeah. 24 at the time? 18. As well? 18. Yeah. Okay. I'd known her for a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, just kind of, uh, worked out. Uh, I mean, we were, I mean, I thought even up in 2018, I thought we were, you know, perfect. Like, Hey, yeah. we're everyone, we're doing messages. We're hosting Bible studies in our home. We're, you know, the pillar of God's kingdom couple. I'm doing all these things for you know, the Brady bunch, but boy, mm-hmm. I, was, I did not see yeah. that coming. So. Yeah. 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 Did you have any rage at all? Um, yeah, I think there's some mixed, uh, you know, testosterone feelings, you know, uh, I mean, any, any like wall punching or, you know what I mean? Yep. Oh, I got a, I got a, I got a punching dummy. against the wall or no, nothing like that. I got a punching dummy invested. That was a good invest. If you're a guy, you should invest in a punching dummy going through this. Just, you know, one of the ones without any arms, just punch that thing. Okay, it's got, the, it's, it's got the heavy base and it's just like the torso and yep. head of a man like that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and you can put any face you want on that if you wanted, and you just wail yeah. away at that if you want, and yeah. uh, you know, and then keep your ears shut to all the gossip. That I live in a town with fifty people. There's fifty, the small town, small rural, and uh, wow. you know the gossip mm-hmm. that goes around. And yeah, you just yeah. you just forget that stuff. <laughs> Don't forget any mind. You know, keep busy. What? What was the uh, what were the like the top three things that you did to remain normal? Yeah. During um, the first and second year, what did you do to 
because obviously your world is rocked. Yeah. You need to create a new normal. Yeah. You feel numb. How did you get your feelings back? Tell me about that process. Um, working out was huge. Getting into shape, doing a little bit of uh, protein dieting, uh, eating lots of protein. Um, I'm not a drinker or a small. I enjoy a cigar and a pipe from time to time, but um, yeah. Yeah, no substances, but yeah, just uh, working out, staying focused on the kids, like number one. And um, I found a hobby. I started painting shoes. I have some. Oh, I, painting I, I painted, shoes. I painted the Last Supper on this shoe right by the Energizer Bunny here. And uh, I, I have never heard of painting shoes, but how fascinating! Yeah, yeah there's that. And then. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of silly. I sewed some bears to this shoe <laughs> just for the heck of it. So, yeah. I, first of all, I could see like Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers wearing those in concert. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I painted a bunch of shoes and, <laughs> you know, just anything. You got to get a hobby. I don't care if you're fishing, go fishing. Uh, pick up a hobby. There's plenty of, um, you know, we should. Here's a Shark Tank idea. We should have an app that finds us like divorcee people, but it's not like Uber. It's like the, you don't get picked up. They come to you or you meet up somewhere and you charge by the hour or whatever and you get uh, testimonial advice on what to do with people in your state that are probably leading towards like a divorce situation or something. I don't know. Just an idea. You mean amongst like just lay people or lawyers? What do you think? No, uh, lawyers are, I mean, any way to save money while going, not to get legal advice, just to get advice from people that have been through the divorce yeah. court. So I'm a guy who got 50, 50 custody. I can think of five people right now that want to talk to me about what do we do to get, how do I get 50, 50? Cause that's hard. And, and if you're a guy, don't fight for more than 50, 50, unless she's an ax murdering drug addict, you're not going to get it. And she has to be both of those. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow. Now, as far as, you know, they say when people go through these things, the next time mm -hmm. you want a woman, you do things a little bit differently. Yeah. What, what will you do differently moving forward from this? Yeah, prenup. That's the big word. Get a prenup. You never think, but get one. Learn your divorce laws. Know, just know the statistics of divorce yeah. in our time. Um, you know, just, you know, Coach Greg Adams will throw those statistics out and all of his funny, you know, words and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, watch out for um, – you'll, you'll see them. You'll see a lot of uh, things you didn't see before. Trust issues will probably just happen. I, to this day, of course, you know, you're just thinking, oh, okay, where's that secret phone at? I know there's, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, – yeah. it, yeah, it's an eye opener for sure. There's not a Disney fantasy movie. And then when you find out uh, when you get run through the divorce machine with the justice system that we have these days, it's if you're a guy, it's just, uh, it's just a tough deal. And the, you know, neither of us wanted child support, but they're their own entity. So they make, you know, for equal living situation, whatever. So you just, they just kind of do their own thing, you know? <laughs> so mm. wow. yeah, They're their own entity. So, wow. Yeah. Now, what would you tell somebody who just went through this? I know there's a guy somewhere who's going to encounter this video yeah. who just went through this this past weekend or is going to go through this. Yeah. Okay. So the number one go ahead. Is, that, uh, is um, looking back, going through it, document everything. Video is better than picture. Um, because I got claims of, uh, oh, I was abusing or threatening in this certain moment. And if I didn't have my camera recording, you know, you can hold your camera up to you. I'm on my camera right now. Um, there's there's apps you can have where your camera's running secretly so you don't have to, like, have it. So it's obviously a recording. Um, document everything. T past texts will be used against you. Um, everything. Assuming it's going towards divorce. And I think at that point when you catch in the act, you know, a lot of times we just have to see it to believe it. You're going to go towards that. So document everything. Uh, save the man, not the marriage. So work on yourself, assuming you're the guy in this situation. Um, and then keep an eye on those kids because they're going to need 
some kind of stability because my my six year old to this day is having incredible trauma because of this, and uh, yeah. the younger one is it is was a little too young to remember. But yeah, yeah. Um, where yeah, it's um, but document everything. I would start working out right away. You have plenty of good, awesome videos with like 10 tips on what to do right away. <laughs> so, yep. and, and those, those are the ones I watched. So, yeah. Yep. Who are some of the other content creators? And I yeah. know everybody personally. Most sure. of the people that, that you watch mm -hmm. are either friends of mine, friendly acquaintances, colleagues. I've shared stages with a lot of people. I have sure. their numbers in my phone. We text each other often. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people that you've learned from? Uh, on YouTube only? Yeah. Yep, YouTube. Um, you, and that's, I'm like I said, I don't, I don't do much up to you. <laughs> yeah. Coach Greg Adams, you know, so when you go yeah. into, into you, YouTube is suppressing like crazy. I know this machine that it's come to because I'm a YouTuber myself. And uh, yeah, so like, uh, I don't know. That you Usually in the recommended section, after you search for a few, it'll start throwing kind of more your way. That's not so much the case right now. Yeah. Really only you off the top of my yeah. head. So okay. I got a lot of good old Norwegians out here that can give some awesome advice. You know, you think about my grandpa. He was a World War II guy. He drove a tank in World War II, and he's passed. But we asked him, I remember asking, why don't you talk about the war or growing up in the Depression, you know, the 30s? Yeah. And and he would always say, what's to talk about? That's awful. Like, we don't, bad things. It's bad. It's sad. We're not talking about it. And I think that's one thing when you go through this, we need more of. We don't need to uh, – you don't need to make a TikTok video talking about how I just hate women, you know, like you just keep that to yourself. Yeah. It's going to be a, if Michael Jordan and Jeff Bezos can get cheated on, you're probably going to get cheated on, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. S say that again, that last sentence. If you're probably, if Michael Jordan and Jeff Bezos can get cheated on, you're probably going to get cheated on. You know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not uh, out of the realm of this happening too. And trust your gut, you know, how do you trust your gut? Yeah, one would say the Holy Spirit, um, and another would just say that intellect, intuition, just that uh, that knowing. Mm -hmm. um, my phone keeps blowing up, but yeah, get your get your emotions out of it, get your feelings out of there. Uh, feelings will get you in trouble pretty quick, so you just got to use your rational thinking. Yeah, yeah. What does your future look like? for you and women and relationships and have you dated have you entertained mm -hmm. the thought of having another woman in your life yep i've i've given it um i've given it time uh initially it's just i'm working on initially for like the first year year and a half it's just the kids uh, let's get the this kids kid. two girls so i run a couple hunting lodges and it's all camouflage okay. over here and it's all pink unicorns over here and uh yeah. so figuring out how to be a single dad that's that's quite fun sarcastically and uh <laughs> so then uh dating yeah i've i've went on plenty of dates you know um 2020 that was how do you meet people in a town with 50 people you don't so you get on the dating apps and you find out the the amazing people that are out there <laughs> so then you <laughs> kind of pull back but uh no i've i've found uh a lady that um, I have, boy, you know, the trust issues have flooded, you know, what's this, what's that. And she's who, the thing is, I think you said it actually is who can help you build, like who can build your dream, focus on your purpose, your goal, and who can complement that to build that. And what does that look like? And is she a good mother to your kids? You know, if you're a guy, so yeah. Oh, there's, there's hope. There's plenty of fish. Statistically, there's more women than men. You don't need to rush to nothing, you know. Yeah, I have. I I like to say there's 3.8 billion in the world. 3.8 billion women in the world, and you're worried about one. Yeah, worried about one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and be fine with yourself. I mean, I watch that video all the time where you go. I love how you describe things. Like you were talking about a video. Uh, uh, you were with your dad. I think you're on a porch or an enclosed porch, and you were enjoying a cigar, and you can remember that 
that orange glow of that ember lighting up and it kind of lit his face yeah. up and you had, you could hear the ice going circling in his glass and yeah. um, be okay with being by yourself. Like don't have, you don't need a relationship. What's to rush. <laughs> All right. I, and I, I love the, uh, to me, their virtues to me, the silence, solitude and service. Oh yeah. How did, how, have, how have you practiced silence, solitude and service? in your life since then. Yeah. Um, uh, being by myself was, um, take myself to dinner. It's super awkward in the beginning when you've been married forever or dating forever. But, um, yeah. Table take for one, to, please. Yeah. Table right. for one. And you get the nicest steak there and you're going to, I mean, you're going to have fun. It feels awkward, but you, it's kind of fun. I get used to it. You, you got a lot more freedom. You save a lot more money. And, um, you know, go to a movie by yourself. Uh, it sounds lonely, but being alone doesn't have to be lonely. There's plenty of things to do. Get, you know, pick up a hobby. I like to sometimes just go for a walk in the woods, go lay on the ground. I don't know. There's something healing about that. You don't need your phone. Shut your phone off. So, yeah. And uh, how to how to be okay um, with yourself. I can't. What was it? Peace, solitude, and silence, solitude, and service. Service, yeah. Do go go do something for somebody else without making money. Uh, go volunteer somewhere. I mean, you're gonna get your mind off yourself in this awful situation. Like you say, there's no can't hug a porcupine and not get hurt. So, um, right. yeah, get out of that a little bit and go do something for somebody else. And yeah, it, it'll take the edge off real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you tell someone who's going through this right? now there are men watching right now who just experienced this yep. they need they need something from you right now what do you tell them right now right now if you have two kids and you just went through this grab your kids give them a big hug tell them it's all going to be okay and um and if, if your kids aren't there and they're taken from you or whatever um you just need to uh you need to watch some George Bruno videos and know that it's just going to be okay. We Everyone's going through this. You think it would never happen. It happens to you. And uh, yeah, it's it, look in the moment in, when you're in that pit, it's, it's awful. Like there's just no, you, I couldn't make myself not throw up. I was so sick. I was just going through feelings. I didn't even know. And I, I'm not a crier. Physically, oh yeah. Physically, physically oh. felt it. Yep. I lost like, 30 pounds and I'm not fat. <laughs> so I was skin and bones sick. And that just, I don't know how to get over that. That's just something that just has to, that's a good answer. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just, it's a time thing. Time heals a lot. Yep. Yep. And, and like after that video, when I caught that, I didn't tell my family, I was kind of ashamed. I kind of blamed myself. Like, what did I do? And apparently that's some kind of a word, like an empath or something. I don't know, but um, yeah, first, what did I do wrong? Oh, I screwed up or something, but no, it, there's some people are just going to make these decisions. And unfortunately you kind of got to ride the river. So I remember a pastor told me once, um, he says, in time, you will see the role that you played in the demise of your marriage. And I got really mad at that oh, yeah. pastor thinking, Okay. And I, and I knew my relationship with that church was going to end at that moment. Yep. It was, yep. uh, it was, it was difficult. And in time I did see areas where I was wrong, Sure, but that didn't make it hurt any less when I went right. through it. How do you, now that you went through what you went through, how does, how does somebody not see your mistrust? Yeah. Um, hmm. That is a good question. I did not think of that one. Huh. I don't know, George. That's a, that's a good one. I don't wear it on my sleeve. You know, I don't, uh, I don't, like I say, I don't have any social media, so I don't go to people and say I would cheat it on. Here's my testimonial. Um, yeah, I guess you just kind of uh, wake up, do your thing. Um, like if you have a side business, hustle that. Maybe you got to quit your nine to five and get around a different group of people. I mean, like I said, I lost all my friends and not that that's going to be forever. Um, I actually found I enjoy 
kind of being by myself and uh but again by myself but not uh lonely uh kind of love it and uh get to sink a lot of time into my kids and um learning about all that stuff just being a dad and and i'm super fortunate and grateful because some people don't have that opportunity and if you're going through this and you don't have kids be so grateful off the bat that you don't have kids be so grateful so so you got a couple one two punches right you you lost a woman that you love yeah and then you lost friends too people abandoned you so that's like another another type of another form of betrayal not uncommon yep how did you deal with that Oh man. Yeah. So my friends, we were all homeschooled 23 plus years, basically brothers did everything together for years, camping, good old fun stuff. Go learn how to shoot the BB gun together. And, uh, yeah, we were all friends as couples, you know, when I moved, uh, my ex-wife in, they, she met them and we all kind of grew, you know, for six plus years, really close to, they, they still live right behind me here, right? There's a window right over here. You look out, there's their house. And, uh, yeah. Um, you just, I don't know. You just kind of cope, cope through it. You know, you're shocked. You uh, also get an attorney right away. If like, if you're married and you're going through this, if your boyfriend, girlfriend, again, be so proud. You're not married. Uh, and if you don't have kids, be so glad you're not married. Just be so thankful for that fact. But if you're married and you have kids, get an attorney, spend that three to five on a retainer. It's going to be expensive. There's it's the best money you're ever going to spend. If you're the guy, you instantly have the disadvantage, but um, go with your attorney's advice on maybe who to be cautious around. Don't be talking bad like, oh, man, I wish she was dead or something. Don't ever say anything like that ever because it's going to maybe your friend won't say it, but maybe he tells his wife and, you know, his wife is telling him, you know, (laughs) nothing is safe. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Get a dash cam too. Like I say, with the documenting, learn about making videos, upload them to YouTube privately and so no one can view them. Learn all that. It's really easy. It sounds hard. It's not hard. I don't do technology and I can figure it out. So, yeah, get a good dash cam. Now, you were doing um, a family vlog. Yeah. You were showing everybody what a happy family you were. And so yep, forth. and they're all still up. Everyone can watch them. Yeah. Now let me ask you this: what ha- what happened to that vlog, and is it still going? Is it does it yeah. have does it have Chris the new Chris on it? The, the next <laughs> chapter of Chris's life. Right. So uh, when that happened, um, we made a few more videos. Um, you know, you try to keep up with what's normal. You try to cling to some kind of normalcy because your brain is going crazy and physically you're, you're showing signs of wear. But um, no, to this day, my attorney advised that that be shut down because it was turning into a tool where the ex-wife was watching the videos and they were looking for any little thing. Like, so I, there was one, there was a knife out on the table. Oh, that could be grabbed by the children. Unsafe living environment, you know, yeah. so. <laughs> You got to watch out with what you put out there. And looking back, we should have ended those vlogs a long time ago. But no, videos are still being uploaded for me and when the when I want those videos to be public, you know, for the kids or kind of fun memories. It's I like I like making YouTube videos. So we have one video that did over 23 million views. It just went viral. And that's how everyone heard about us. So, but yeah, that fell apart overnight. And then every all the viewers sided with her and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a, a man can't get a break in the courts. A man can't get a break in, it's tough. With, you know, with the court of public opinion. And right. it seems like the only people who really understand are those who've been through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where that app idea comes in because like even when we're, so in state of North Dakota, you get six hours of mediation. Let's say you're going the divorce route and that's paid for by the state. Really you get five hours. They don't tell you that, but, um, if when you're going through that, um, the person who's mediating it was a girl and she'd never been divorced and she's a girl. So if you're a guy going through it, they can't relate. And, and the negotiating, if you want to call it that, um, is, uh, it's kind of toxic and wacky that way. So yeah, finding somebody who's been through the machine in your state is pretty crucial and somebody that's not just freshly been through it Yeah, or is currently going through it. Yeah. 
Woods. Some people call it the meat grinder or the slaughterhouse. Do you feel it was uh, either one of those things for you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was, um, it was bad. Like I said, she had a drug addict move. It was not, it's not like a shock. Everyone knew this guy. He had restraining orders against him and everything. And, um, uh, the guy who she got pregnant with, um, right after that. And, uh, none of that had any ounce of problem. Uh, all the video facts about me being at home with the kids, me and me doing everything. Um, yeah, none of it had any weight and said it was, uh, I don't know. It felt like the lens was on me a lot more. You, you could. Yeah. So yeah. Fighting for that. You know, I was like parent alienation. There's, you know, there's gotta be a consequence for that. No, no. Unless I did it, you know, then, Oh no. <laughs> so yeah. And, and if you're going to look for justice with that, you're not going to find it. There's no, um, uh, don't, don't get hooked up on getting back at somebody just move on. You, It'll never end. And to this day, we talk to each other for the kids. We have a two, two, three custody schedule. Um, and, you know, you try to make it work, but they're to this day. We were, I was just in court the other day cause her fiance was following me in his squad car and trying to make a whole thing. And it's been going on for over a year. And we brought that to the court. The judge was like, Hey, just stay out of his town, Mr. Cop. And uh, <laughs> what justice came of that? Probably none, but whatever it's it's kind of childish when you look at the big picture of everything so yeah yeah could be in afghanistan and have some real problems you know (laughs) yeah right right perspective is everything yeah a little bit yeah yeah how did your family deal with all of this so my um my yeah they were all really good um First, they couldn't believe it because everything, I mean, I could get into really gritty details that were just crazy, but YouTube would pull this video down so fast. Um, But they didn't believe it. They were like, no, she would never do that. She'd never lie. She's kind of a saint, you know, and there is quite a facade. There's a lot of uh, um, things you, wishful thinking is a kind of a bad curse a little bit. You want something to be a certain way, but it's not. Yeah, that's a bad one. But they, uh, they're to this day super supportive. They see um, the situation for what it was. And, um, yeah, you kind of you got to have a lot of healthy boundaries. You know, um, my mom wants to come over and do a lot of stuff, and you kind of got to stiff arm that. Well, if you're friends with her on Facebook and posting pictures in my house, like she could see those. Uh, so you got to kind of yeah. see the wolves in the sheep's clothing. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. But they're great. My family's phenomenal. I'm fortunate enough in that. How do you move forward? Do you do you want to have a relationship again? Does it make you have cold feet uh, meeting yeah. women, especially in a in a small town? Obviously, you have to go outside yeah, of the yeah. town yeah. to uh, what? Yeah. How do you how do you move forward with women, and how do you how do you treat women now? What is your perspective about dating now that's different than it was? Yeah, you can kind of see years it. ago. Yeah, it's different. It's for sure different. I mean, it's probably getting harder now. I feel like a lot of it's hard to find a woman in with the old school ways. There's some. There's there's some out there you'll find. I, there was that one girl that was on a few of your videos. I, th- I think like the last one was you had her smelling different cans of tobacco or something. Oh, yeah. I yes. can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah, I, yeah that, was, that, that was from 2017. Uh, yeah, that was about. 17. Yeah, almost four years. Yeah, you can just sense it in so, some people. Um, I don't think, I don't, and I don't want to call this a trust issue, but there's ways um, when, when I approach people now I'm not as trusting so initially how we started talking was about the men's group and I, I kind of disagreed with it I was kind of like ah, my situation with small men's groups not so good because there yeah. was multiple men in there with my wife you know <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah but yeah so you approach everything you hold out your cards a little closer to your chest you're not swayed by your emotions and you kind of talking words don't matter as much as action so maybe you 
maybe you meet a girl or a guy and you hop on their social media feed. If you're seeing a bunch of selfies and bikinis or look at me in this filter, maybe, maybe she's not ready or he's not ready for a relationship and you got to figure out where you're at. I, I, I went to a counselor just for myself for a good solid year after while we're going through the divorce machine, just to stay sane and get different ideas. So, yeah. What's the, best, what's the best idea that you were given? What was the, what's one thing that stands out in your mind that helped you maintain your sanity, clarity, and reason? <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah. That's a good one. Finding a new normal. What is that? Um, you know, every morning I grab the kids. Uh, it's not, I mean, not as much now, but we watch the daybreak show every morning, get our chopsticks. We stir our coffee using the vortex method. We clink it twice. You know, I mean, you find a new fun normal and uh, yeah. humor and joy is, is a little bit more plentiful. We turn the news off. We don't watch the, the crazy stuff and uh, we try to stay positive. Um, I get, yeah, there, there, you got to kind of pick your battles. I guess that's what I would title this whole thing. Pick your battles because uh, so my brother committed suicide or passed away. However you want to look at it a few years ago. And everyone's been at that moment where it's like, do you want to see your loved one in that casket? Or do you want to remember what it was like in your head? And a lot of people, you know, maybe they just go see it. And then it's kind of like, Oh, that was a, uh, maybe the bad choice to do. I don't know. So you got to pick your battles with this whole thing. And, uh, find out what works. I don't think there's a formula in any of this. Everyone's a little yeah. bit different. I'm a little bit more forget it, whatever. And uh, But some people might just be more vocal and want to talk and have emotions and maybe join a, a group of talking about stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but whatever. <laughs> so you're saying your brother committed suicide. Yep. Was yep. this before or after the, the breakup of the marriage? Uh, that was before. So t 2014. Yeah. is when that happened. Yep. So it was a few years. She went to the funeral, you know, she, she was great. Like I said, I can't complain about her one bit during the marriage before the cheating stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you see yourself getting married again? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a, uh, I don't, I don't think I'm codependent, but um, even right now I found somebody who I can see building with me i've kind of just focused on not to sound selfish but i've kind of focused on my empire my thing and i kind of just look beside me and found somebody who's kind of running the same pace who kind of complements that goal of building this you know lodges and different things we own a couple different properties i own a couple different properties and um yeah you don't have to let that sour experience in your past dictate the rest of your future even if you're older maybe you've been married 20 30 years that does not have to play a role in the rest of your life. And you, yeah. that'd be a kind of a sour ending to a movie. <laughs> Frodo yeah. gave up. He didn't throw the ring away. <laughs> it was all for nothing. <laughs> no. All right. So you, so you have 2,500 acres with hunting lodges. Yep. Yep. Did your business take a hit when you were emotionally not available? How how did it affect your business or did it? Um, uh, I would say I, um, and maybe this might not have been a great thing, but I got super into my, I used my businesses as a way to get out of my head a little bit. So I, I ramped all my energy and aside from being a father, uh, father first, and then my businesses came second and they flourished because um, first of all, saving a ton of money, not buying all the stuff that was had been bought before and then just soaking all my time and energy. That was kind of my hobby. I like to hunt and fish ramped off these lodges and now I don't get to hunt and fish as much, but we get to get other people out and join to make a wish foundation, different things like that. And um, yeah, so the businesses were booming and then 2020 hit. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Tell me about yep. your business. You, you host people for hunting weekends or a week or what's the. Yep. So they're just hunting lodges. Um, one's called the, the Pekin Lodge and one's called the Stump Lake Lodge. And um, 
there in North Dakota and uh, people come out. We have a lot of weddings and reunions and stuff, but uh, Devil's Lake is a big lake by us. A lot of people fish that. We have a uh, duck and goose season and we're one of the only states you can shoot swans in. I don't know why we want to shoot a swan, but if you wanted to, you could. And um, yeah, so people come out and hunt and fish. That's our primary people that come out and uh, they're kind of apartment styles. So there's kitchens and beds and everything. And it's pretty laid back environment. Yep. You provide uh, boats and ATVs or that kind of yep, thing? We have a, yep. We, we sub, we do packages. We have a, a guide and the guide would take people out. It, he's super booked. Like we're right now we're booked. It's the weekend coming up, you know, and, uh, but yeah, we have a guide that takes people out. So if people don't have any gear at all, we have a lot of doctors, uh, Josh Dumal, who's some actor, famous actor guy. He grew up in Minot, so he's stayed with us once. And, um, yeah, it's it's just really uh, – <laughs> I don't even know how to promote my business. It's just a fun thing I like to do, and it kind of worked where other people liked it too. So it took off. And Well, have, if, if any of our listeners want to tell, – tell me about a typical package. If there's anyone who's watching this and yeah. is interested in – a weekend, a long weekend in North Dakota. Sure. How yeah. Can I contact um, you? Yeah, what, you can contact me. Um, yeah, my the business number for the Pekin Lodge. That's where I would recommend because I'm in Pekin. Is seven zero one two nine six four four one one. And uh, you call that up. You talk to me directly, and uh, we could set up. A, we could set up a package deal to take you out fishing if you want to spend that money. A lot of people are just do-it-yourselfers. You got a fishing pole, maybe you have a boat. There's plenty of fish out here, walleye, perch, northern, that kind of thing. And uh, I can give you the hot spots and where to catch them. I've lived here 23 years. I know every er, everywhere. And if you have your out-of-state hunting license, we can open up hunting land for you too. So everyone gets fun. That, it's a weird, there's a service industry and a product industry. We're kind of service where I get to create memories with people because it's a, a lot of that, it's like, why would you spend a thousand dollars to shoot a bird? Like go to a grocery store. But it's what we see is the old grandpas want to take their sons out because they took their sons out and they go create these memories. So it's kind of, it's just fun. It's pretty fun time. But if you want to save some money, don't get a guide, go do it yourself. I'll hook you up. <laughs> so. Okay. How, how far are you from the nearest airport? If somebody wants to fly in, Yep. So if they flew in, I would go to Devil's Lake or Grand Forks, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota is about two hours from us, and uh, you can land there. Um, I could pick them up from the airport. I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty flexible. I could have one of our employees run out, grab you. I don't think Uber is out here, so <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a way we could find a way to get it, make it all work out. So. So you truly are a service organization. Yeah. Yep. Stay service oriented because a lot of places you can't control when you're, when you're out doing your, one of your adventures, you can't control gas prices. You're going to pay what it costs to fill up, but you can control where you stay and where you eat out. Cause a lot of our rooms have, all of our rooms have kitchens. So you can cook your own food, cook your meals. And the best part is, the people you'll meet because we get a lot of these old Polish, German, Norwegian guys that just say it like it is. They don't care, you know, and those are the best conversations you'll ever have. And the, just the life lessons you'll learn. Oh man. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, someone just said, uh, I got family in Lakota Devil's oh, yeah. Lake. Yep. Yep. Lakota. That's where the uh, Stump Lake Lodge is. And yeah, we can get them right there. I'm, it's just to the north. So, yep. Come on out. You can stay for free. Just say, just subscribe to George Bruno. Get on the, uh, that, what's that, uh, what's that, what's that, a Patreon. Join the Patreon. Patreon. Get up, sign up on the website. Isn't quite going yet, right? As I understand, George. But you can well, sign it, up with your email. It's just a, uh, it's just a landing page where they yeah. just go to georgebruno.com. Yeah. When are you going to start selling chopsticks? Everyone wants a pair of George <laughs> Bruno chopsticks. You know, I had, there was a, there was a gentleman who uh, a couple of years ago wanted he and his woman watched the Daybreak Show, sure. and uh, he he wanted to give her a pair of signed chopsticks. Oh and, yeah, and I 
I did just for the heck of it, and I sent them to him, and I just thought that was kind of funny. Oh, and, totally. Uh, she, she she got a she got a kick out of that. So, hey, heck let me yeah. ask you this: How yeah. does hunting and fishing and being out in the wilderness help a man? Helps a man huge. That's just primal manhood. I mean. And I'm talking like man, not if you identify as a man. I don't know how that works. But if you're a man, you need nature. You just need it. It's you need to go out, get your get some dirt under your fingernails. You need to shut off all electronics, go for a walk. And if you need somebody, uh, chances are you probably know an older guy, like a kind of a, a grandpa or maybe your dad, and you just need that kind of man fun bonding time. Um, nature is huge. Go camping and don't take a camper. Get a tent, sleep under the stars, rough it just a little. Um, yeah. There's a lot to be said. I love some of your videos were uh, kind of like how to live off the land, like some of the nutrients in our own backyard. Man, educate yourself on that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, it sounds like you live in God's country and you're up near the Canadian border. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's good. We're very fortunate. And, you know, with the whole breakup thing, it was a horrible thing that unfolded, probably more so worse for the kids. And if you're going through this, you're going to get through it. I mean, don't do anything stupid where you're sitting in jail forever, but um, you might have that feeling you want to. Don't do it. I promise you, at least no are good. Plenty of testimonials about all this kind of stuff. Life goes on. Just be there for your kids if you have them, and life will figure it itself out. You get the toxic people out life will work stay positive look at the glass half full yeah so what is the future of chris future of chris well someday i'll get married again and uh i think we're just going to keep building this empire and yeah i want to hit up the i just missed that men's conference um you guys had um is there a, a date on when a new one of those will be out the one in vegas uh I'm not sure yet, but I'll be announcing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be in my future. Um, one thing when you go through all this divorce stuff, you tend not to plan. And I can't, I've, this is pretty recent even for me. So I can't say what I'm going to be like five years down the road if you're going through this, but I try, I, I tend not to plan too far in advance just because there's enough uncertainty in a month. So yeah, yeah. but it's, it's going to be bright. I, I don't see any problems or anything like that so if you can survive through the current administration you're good <laughs> so. all right oh so, we're just gonna take it down <laughs> so so here's chris you're 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 six foot six you have a great yeah. business yeah you know you have a lot of things going for you yeah. there's a lot of women who will look at ooh, a tall guy yeah he's got a great business he's yeah. grounded he's based as all heck yeah. You know, it seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. Yep. Uh, can you spot a user if she's coming towards you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had never, um, like I said, I never had, I only had one girlfriend ever, all that stuff. That was my ex-wife. And when I hop back on the dating scene, uh, oh, man, six foot six. Don't have to go. I, I don't have to work if I marry him. Nine to five. I don't need that. You know, he's good father to his kids. Oh man, single mothers came flocking like crazy. Thirty plus year old women came. I'm thirty two. Um, yeah, I mean it was it was uh, a lot. I didn't have to uh, like I didn't have to do a lot of searching. They kind of find you pretty quick. And you know the old neighbor ladies. My granddaughter is looking for a guy. You know, but you need that time to work on yourself, like yep. big time. And then when you are looking for a mate, um, yeah, everything just kind of works. I think everything just kind of works out. Yeah, don't I don't go looking. Uh, get yourself into shape, and uh, a lot of things will kind of play to your benefit too. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good. You have so many good questions, George. Man, what what is your relationship with church now? Yep. So I still upload the daily church or the weekly church sermons. I I talk to my pastor every every day. Uh, they eventually saw the the dabbling that was going on in the church within the congregation. 
with my ex-wife and different things. So they caught on now, but it's kind of like, well, all this has been done. How much can you really trust? I don't know. It's a matter of, I mean, we would probably get a CPS call, a C, um, child protective service call next month for all I know. So um, keeping them at arm's length, but um, just because the church is, the church out here got kind of toxic doesn't mean that God or Jesus or the Bible has anything to do with it. It's just the people, you know? You know, I'm glad you said that too, because I became very leery yeah. of churches. Very, yep. very, I didn't become leery of God. Right. I mean, yep. God is, God is faithful to us. Oh yeah. In the light of eternity. Doesn't yep. pr protect us from other people's foolishness. Right. Keeps us yep. strong. What role did, what role did the Lord play in helping you maintain your sanity throughout this whole thing? Yeah, I would say huge. Yeah, prayed every night, put my face in the carpet. Still did. I right before you called, I was praying with my face in the carpet. Like, don't, don't let me say anything stupid. I pray somebody uh, have a good pull something from this that, that all this wasn't just for nothing. And um, yeah, God was huge. Um, praying and one thing I like about scripture, and this is just because I read a lot, and not that 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 people that don't aren't any less than me. I'm. <laughs> not that important compared, but, um, is God never asked us how we felt. He kind of just told us to do. So I'm just kind of like, Hey, why are we talking about our feelings all the time? Like <laughs> we should just go do, I know. I, I bet my, the general didn't tell my grandpa, how do you feel about go and kill all these Japanese people? No, just go get, get in that tank and go out there and do that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know. I, I ne didn't expect any of these good questions, George. <laughs> yeah. this, this has been a, a great conversation, and I know it's, like I said, my inbox is going to be filled, but this video will be available on YouTube tonight, and I know people are going to be asking questions and making comments. Uh, I want you to feel free to promote your business in the comment section of the video. People are going to want to know, hey, I need to escape. Uh, there might be a guy who who just went through this and the best thing yeah. that could happen to him is to go off into the woods in the middle of yeah. nowhere with a yeah. guide uh, to be at a lodge, to be yeah. around a fire pit. Yeah. Uh, if, to, if you're going through reflect. this, yeah, if you're going through this, come out to the lodge, you stay for free for however long we had traveling nurses that stay for months. So really, if you need to just disconnect, come out here. Absolutely. You just say, I watched this on George Bruno come out and it's, it's on us. There's no charge. Yeah, every guy mandatory. You have to go into the woods, and if you don't live near the woods, you need to drive somewhere to find the woods. <laughs> you just need to be with nature for a minute, and not and that's not coming from some tree hugger perspective. That's just from a natural, organic man perspective. Go get in nature, hear the birds. Yeah, this is good. Go get some of that curry. That looks pretty good. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> what What does it mean? to be a man what does it mean well you got to be a leader i think we're all called to be, have some kind of leadership especially for our household and if you don't know how to lead get around some leaders and a, a lot of people i'm better i'm a better follower or and not not to sound all churchy i'm a better um servant than uh than a leader but at some point you got to kind of man up and there's a lot of that kind of snowflakey uh what do you call it uh um like being a simp or whatever that word is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Coach Greg Adams would call him a simp pansy. You got, yeah. there's a little thing to that. Like you just kind of got to man up and um, not that you have to be macho or tough bro or anything like that. You don't yeah. need to go get a tattoo, but yeah, go, go, uh, go shoot a gun, go uh, safely, um, go do some, uh, I don't know, go do something manly, go smoke some meat. There's a good one. Learn about cigars. Yeah. That's quite an art, really. It is. It is. Would you be open to being on other people's channels to talk about your experience? I know I have a certain audience that listens to me. I think I think there's other people that uh, – there's other content creators that I'm friends with that I think you would – if telling your story yeah. on another channel will help yeah. a whole – 
different group of men that would never listen to me. Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Would, would you be willing to do that? Absolutely. Yep. I just sit here anyway. So, Hey, I'm good. I mean, I'm just in bed right now. Eh? <laughs> so yeah, I'll definitely join anything. Yeah, absolutely. If, if we can because. help men, that's what we need. We need guys talking about this kind of stuff because boy, when I went through it, I didn't know if I didn't have you, George, I don't know what I would have, you know, what am I going to do? Talk to my friends that are going to do that. Yeah. Who, who is there? So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need a men's community like this. It's healthy. Yeah. Any final words for for our listeners and for the people who are going to watch this video long yeah. after it's uploaded? Give us some final yeah. words. Yeah. Think, uh, I would say think long-term. Pick your battles. We talked about that. Think long-term. Don't think like what's happening right now. Uh, like I say, if, you, if you're just dating – and you find your girl cheating or guy cheating or whatever, um, <laughs> save the woman or the man, not the marriage, okay, or the relationship. Uh, you got to pull out of that, work on because not just for your mental sanity, but there's a lot of STDs floating around um, that you don't want. <laughs> and there's a lot of health problems that can come with that. And maybe, maybe uh, like in my situation, maybe this cop would have taken as far as to harm me, or you don't want to get into that crazy drama stuff. So pull out. And um, look long term. Don't do anything stupid. Get your feelings out of the way. You got to think rationally. Take a step back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pick your battles. And there is no good way to. There's no good way to do this kind of stuff. You're gonna feel icky. You're gonna feel sick. Don't run to any substance. Don't go to the bar. People are gonna hear that you're now at the bar, and it's just not gonna work. <laughs> I don't care if you're just getting a pizza or a burger. Don't go to the bars. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, and find a hobby. Get stay busy. You don't need to sit and I mean there's a time to mourn, sure, a relationship, but that doesn't need to happen for a year. It <laughs> doesn't need to happen for a month, really. Right. So, right. Yeah. And that's how me though. Live, that could be anybody. How do how do you live your life now? Obviously, yeah. uh do you do you ever access the pain of this? Do you walk yeah. with an emotional limp now? Is it Tell me, sure. is the pain getting less and less as time goes on? Yeah. Yeah. The pain subsides pretty quick. It depends if you're going through the divorce machine that went on for well over a year. So that kind of keep kind of keeps you in it and you get built up more of that frustration of, Oh man, I got a, this is so injustice. This just couldn't be, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to get an attorney. I'm just going to stand up and tell the truth and God will be on my side in front of the judge. And that's just, not how it works you know you no, you know how it is george <laughs> it's not a great situation so I um i do but yeah i mean uh, there's a long it, life's a lot longer than um than right now in this moment and I, how i live my life now i try to smile a lot and try to uh have fun with it be a great dad to the kids get involved in whatever fantasy world they live in and uh yeah, and just I like making money. It's fun to make money, so I work a lot. And um, the only I don't like I say I have much of a social life, but um, got little hobbies here and there, and learn a new skill. There's tons of stuff to learn. Tons of stuff. Do do a little traveling. If you don't have much money, it doesn't take much to go learn something. Go travel somewhere. Amtrak has a train that goes through here. That'll take you to Glacier. If you've never been to Glacier National Park, go. West Glacier, any of that. Yellowstone's great, too. I mean, Deadwood, South Dakota, that's amazing. I mean, you need to hit it. So, oh, that's great. World All right, big. so what I'm going to ask you to do is after this video is uploaded, which is going to happen pretty quickly tonight, uh, feel free in the comment section to put your, your business – and how to reach you, whatever website or phone number sure. or whatever. And I will pin that comment to the top so people oh, can see that right away. Hey, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. But thank you for um, contributing. A lot of times when people respond to me, they respond uh, either with complete sarcasm and uh, with with improper motivation. I felt like your motivation was that you wanted to help men. 
And this is a great platform to do that. And that's something uh, that we do on this channel here. Uh, a yeah. lot of men are going to are going to get some help from this and they're going to. My advice doesn't work for everybody, and I believe that some of your experiences are going to reach men that I would never be able to reach. What's that? I missed you there. I said your experience will touch people that I won't be able to touch. Uh, you're going to relate right. to a lot of people. I'm so, uh, my The church was calling me just as you were... Uh, talking oh, so the mic's a little bit off. I'm sorry, okay. you say it one more time. Well, your experience communicated with men in a way that my experience doesn't communicate with men. So you kind of filled a gap, a little space. Uh, this happened to you while you were a young man. Yeah. Uh, and you are living proof that a man can survive. Tonight is like a master class in divorce survival. That's what I yeah. believe uh, that we accomplished tonight. That's one of the things I think we accomplished. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you for being on the on the show tonight. I appreciate well, thank it. thank you. I mean, we did this with 12 hours notice. And uh, you have my number and feel free to call or text anytime. And I will do the same with you, Chris. So thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much, George. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.